let's talk about dividing. Let's talk about dividing smaller numbers by larger numbers. Like when you see a fraction, like two fourths, you know, you've been taught that to turn that fraction into its decimal equivalent, that you should put the cowgirl in the house. For example, you would take the two, the two, and put it in the house, and you would put the four on the outside, right? You remember that the, the numerator of a fraction is sort of like a cowgirl, right? We'll put a little ponytail here, and she's riding a horse. So here is a horse, right? There's a horse, there's its ponytail, and a horse goes always on the bottom, right? You would never see a horse riding a human. Right, so there's a cowgirl and a horse. And you remember at night when they go home after chasing cows all day, they go to the home and who sleeps in the house? Well, the cowgirl sleeps in the house. There she is, she sleeps with her hat on and the horse has to sleep outside. Poor guy, don't worry, that's normal. Sometimes they sleep in a barn, I guess, but it's warm out. And that helps you remember that the numerator, the top number, is always going to go in the house. That's the cowgirl. And the bottom number is like the horse. The horse sleeps outside. The reason we want to tell this story over and over again is because so many people think that two can't go inside the division symbol, can't go inside the division house, because it's smaller. You were told over and over again, no, you put the wrong number in there. You can't put the small number in the house. But that's not true. It's just not true. You can certainly divide two into four pieces. Just go to your kitchen and grab two apples, and I bet you can cut them into four pieces, right? And let's just find out how big each piece is. All right, so here we go. Here's how you do it. You ask yourself this simple question. How many groups of four can you take away from two? Right? Just like any other division problem. The weird part is the answer is none. I cannot take groups of four away from two. If I look at my multiplication table, 1 times 4 is 4. The only thing less than 2 is 0. 0 times 2 is, or 0 times 4 is 0. And there you go. And you have a remainder of 2. Now we're not going to write remainder 2. We're not going to write remainder 2 fourths, right? We're going to use decimals. We're going to use decimals. So let's erase these and keep going, right? How do you keep going? Well, we think of 2 as the number two, but we could also show it like this, two, and if I pull a little invisible curtain back and show right behind the ones place, there's a decimal. And if I pull it back a little further, behind the ones place is the tenths place, right? So two and zero tenths is really the same thing as two. I'm just showing an extra place value. Now, if this is the ones place in my answer, this has to be the tenths place in my answer. So what we say is just pop this decimal straight up. It keeps the ones place separate from the tenths place. And heck, pop it straight down, right? This is the ones place. This is the tenths place. I just bring that zero all the way down. Okay, how many times can I take four out of 20? The answer is five. Five times four is 20 and you're done. Okay, so pulling that curtain back to show the place value, moving that decimal straight up, to keep your place values straight, right? That's the ones, that's the tens. All right, I was gonna do three fifths down here, but it uh, looks like I'm out of room. Let's just go sideways here. I've got another problem waiting in the wings. All right, eight and two. Two divided by eight. Can it be done? Of course. Look what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a quick second here, and I'm gonna draw two Let's call them apples, right? I've got two. And I'm going to divide them. I'm going to zoom in on this real quick. I'm going to divide them into eight pieces, right? That's two divided by eight. Here we go. Divide it into eight pieces. And we're going to find out, right, how many of these it I can get out of two. So I know, just bear with me for a second. I know I have eight of them. So eight of what? What is that? What is this thing? I've got eight of them. What the heck is it? All right, I'm going to go back and number them real quick just so you can follow me. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got eight of these things. What the heck is it? Well, if you look at it, it looks like it is one fourth. One fourth. I've got eight of these things that are one 
fourths. So that's what my common sense, that's what my diagram tells me. Eight one fourths make two whole apples, right? So let's go back and do this division and see if <clears throat> I can get it to match my diagram. Here we go. I'm going to switch to a new color here. Let's pick a nice green color. All right, how many groups of eight can I get out of two? And hopefully you realize the answer is zero, right? Even one group of eight is bigger than two. I cannot take any groups of eight away from two. So that leaves me with the remainder of two, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to pull the curtain back and show what's behind the ones place. Oh, there's a decimal behind the ones place. There's a decimal behind the ones place. There's a decimal. And I pull the curtain back some more, I'll see that there's a tenths place there. A tenths place. All right, so now I'm going to be working in the tenths place. How many groups of 8 come out of 20? And the answer is, well, 2. 2 times 8 is 16. And dang, I still have a remainder. Well, don't panic. Just keep doing the same thing, right? I need to make my division house a little bit longer because I'm going to show another place value. I'm just pulling the curtain back a little bit farther, a little bit farther, and it shows me the hundredths place, right? So now I'm looking at the hundredths place. How many groups of eight can I take out of 40? And the answer is five. Five times eight is 40, and there it goes. No remainder left. The answer is 25 hundredths which is a little bit weird because over here, I thought the answer was one fourth. Well, it turns out that these answers are the same. Hopefully you recognize that one fourth is the same as, or is equivalent to 25 hundredths. I think that equals 25 hundredths. And obviously as a decimal, that's 25 hundredths. So these numbers match. Right, one fourth is twenty five hundredths. Okay, so there you can see turning uh, a division problem, uh, or turning a fraction into a division problem, or dividing a small number by a large number can easily be done. It can easily be done. All right, great. Thank you so much.